<laughs> Hello. Hey, good morning. So welcome to the last tutorial. So today we will be talking about the remaining questions in our homework six. So there are just three questions. The first one is uh, we want to find out whether the following graph is homeomorphic to K33. So let us recall. So when we are talking about homeomorphic, we are allowed to do uh, two kinds of operations. One is we can we can do a subdivision of an existing edge. So what is meant by subdivision? We add a new vertex in between an existing edge so that the new vertex is going to join to the original endpoint of the edge but replacing the edge. So for instance, if I add a vertex here, let's say I that joins A and F, then this is called a subdivision operation. We replace the original edge AF by AI and IF. Okay. And then the other operation that we can do is smoothing. So smoothing, so for instance, smoothing is the reverse of a subdivision. So if we have a certain vertex that has degree exactly 2, you can remove the vertex and join the corresponding neighbors of this vertex together. Okay, so we can remove this C, but replacing the edge BC and, BA, uh, and CH with the edge BH. So this is called a smoothing operation. When we are doing these two kinds of operations, we see that we can only add degree 2 vertices. Degree 2 vertices means that a vertex that has degree exactly 2, or we can only remove degree 2 vertices. So to find out whether this graph is homeomorphic to K33, we can very easy to find out that it is not. Because in this original graph here, we just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 vertices with degree equal to 3, right? But then for K33, we need to have 6 vertices with degree equal to 3. So in that sense, by doing the subdivision operation or the smoothing, we cannot create degree 3 vertices. In that case, this graph cannot be homeomorphic to K33. Now in another case, we can actually show that this cannot be. The reason is that K33 is not planar, but the graph that we are seeing here is planar. So why? We can remove this red edge, redraw it in this way. So this will now make all the edge not crossing. This is a planar representation of the original graph. So this shows that this graph is not planar. Uh, sorry, this graph is planar. So this cannot be homeomorphic to K33. Okay? Now we have another question. So we want to find out whether this graph, another graph, is homeomorphic to K33. Now the answer here is yes. Okay. So let's think of these three vertices as black vertices, this as white vertices. And then we are going to do the smoothing of all the remaining degree 2 vertices here. So after smoothing, then we will see that each of the black vertices is joined to the white vertices. And similarly, each of the three white vertices, let's say this one, is joined to the other black vertices. So after smoothing, so we don't see this chain anymore. So it is now becoming an edge, an edge, an edge. So in that sense, this is a K33. So K3, after smoothing, we see that this graph becomes a K33. So this is a homeomorphic graph of K33. Okay, so this is question uh, 8b. Now question 9, okay, so we want to find out whether this graph is planar or not. To show whether this is planar, we can actually use Kuratowski's uh, theorem. So Kuratowski says, if a graph is not planar, it must have a subgraph that is homeomorphic to K33 or K5. So here we can see that 
This graph cannot have any subgraph that is homeomorphic to K5. The reason is that there is no vertex with degree equal to 5 or more than 5. So in such a case, then it's never going to happen to have a subgraph homeomorphic to K5. Now, can this graph contains a subgraph uh, that is homeomorphic to K33? The answer is also no. Yeah, because for K33, we need six vertices with degree greater than or equal to 3. But for this one, yeah, no. This one has 3, this one has only 2, this one has only 2. So there are many 2 degree 2 vertices here. So indeed, this question not just asks us whether this is planar or not. We want you to give a planar representation of this graph. Find a way to draw the edges without crossing each other. Okay, so this is one way of doing so. So there are different ways of doing so, but then this is one of the way. So here you can see that, um, yeah. So the red is joined to the pink and the blue. So the red is joined to the pink and the blue. The orange is joined to the pink and the gray. Orange joined to the pink and the gray. Green is joined to the pink, gray, blue, pink, gray, blue, and so on and so forth. By checking each vertex one by one, we will see that this graph on the right hand side is the same as this graph. This, they are just different way of drawing them. Okay, so. So these two are the same, and this is a planar representation. We don't see any edge crossing. So in that case, we have shown that the, the, the graph is planar. And finally, this question here, we have a planar graph, and then it is known that this planar graph has k connected components. So what will be the corresponding Euler planar formula? So we want to find out the case for this generalized version. Okay, now, so how can we do so? So there are two methods. One is, oh, okay, so first of all, what is the formula? The formula will become V plus F is equal to E plus K plus 1. So in the original Euler planar formula, we assume that we just have one connected component. So we have V plus F is equal to E plus 2. Am I correct? But here, we have K connected components. So we replace the 2 by K plus 1. Okay. So how can we get this? So there are two ways of doing so. One is we prove this from scratch again. So instead of the original proof that we have shown in the lecture, we can do so by starting with k vertices at the beginning. We choose one vertex from each connected component. We start from this one. So if it is the case, then at the beginning, we have k vertices but we have just one region, and then there is no edge. Now v is equal to k, f is equal to 1, e is equal to 0, and then v is equal to k, f is equal to 1, e is equal to 0. So left hand side is k plus 1, right hand side is 0 plus k plus 1, so the formula is correct. And then what we can do next is we are going to add the edge one by one. So each time when we add an edge, we make sure that we do not increase the number of connected components. So we are going to add an edge that is joined into some existing connected component. By doing so, we will increase the edge by one, but then we will also either increase the new vertex so that V will be increased by one, as in these two examples, or when V does not increase, then we are joining two existing vertices. So that means that the number of regions will be increased by one. In that sense, the formula will remain correct after each step. Because each time we are adding one, we are either adding V and E, one from both sides, and adding F or E on both sides, so one, one here. So that means that the formula is always balanced after each step. So this is the kind of the induction proof that we have shown in the lecture in the lecture notes. But another way is easier. Okay, so we can use the existing formula to help. So what we are going to do here, existing formula, existing Euler planar formula talks about one connected component. So if we can make the problem 
that we are talking about into one connected component, then this will help us to use the existing formula. So what we are going to do here is we are going to add enough number of edges to make the graph planar, but then make the number of connected components equal to one. So suppose that this is the original graph, we have three connected components, and then it is planar, so there's no edge crossing. So one way of making this into a single connected component is we add two edge. So we add an edge joining any point here to any point here. So this edge can be very interesting, okay? And then joining an, a vertex here with a vertex here, so like this. So we are adding two edge here. And now the whole thing becomes what? It becomes a single connected component. And also it is remaining to be planar. So we are not joining any loop here. So it is still planar. And now for the right hand side graph, we can apply the Euler planar formula. So let's see how we can do so. So I'm going to use V prime to denote the number of vertices in this new graph after adding the edges. F prime, the number of regions in this graph, and then E prime, the number of edges here, f prime number of regions, okay? So we can see that v prime is equal to v, we don't add any new vertex, f prime is equal to f, we don't have any new region, but then e prime will be equal to the original e on this side plus k minus 1, because we're adding k minus 1 edges, okay? Now, on the other hand, we know that all the planar formula works for the right-hand side graph, so we know that v prime plus f prime is equal to e prime plus 2. So what we will do next is we just re replace this. So this is now known. Okay, so we can replace v is equal to v prime. So we replace v prime by v. f is equal to f prime. So we replace f prime by f. e prime is equal to e plus k minus 1. So we replace e plus k minus 1 here. So after replacement of e plus k minus 1, we get e plus k plus 1 on the right hand side. Okay, so, so this is another proof. Okay. So personally, I like the second one because, because uh, we don't need to prove from scratch, but somehow we need to explain or we need to understand why by adding k minus 1 edges, we can join all the components together. So this is easy because after adding one edge, we re reduce the number of connected components while we do not add the region. Okay, so, so this is the idea. So if we understand this idea, then we can prove things very easily. Okay. Eh? So did I make a mistake? So let's see the... Okay, so that's all for today. Yeah. And we will still have a lecture on Wednesday, but the materials covered there won't appear in the exam. I will talk about relation. So this is uh, uh, some, something that we have uh, skipped uh, before. Okay, thanks for coming. And then good luck to your uh, exam preparation. Okay, so I will lock on now. Thanks.